Baiju is finally here, and let's have a taste of what he's like in the next 30 seconds. Baiju's an off-field 5-star Dendro Catalyst healer of solid buffing capabilities. His healing is off the chart, yet his paper-thin shield will snap at a poke. He's free-to-play friendly, maybe even a little too much with that questionable signature weapon in those constellations. He has no ICD on his burst, his Dendro application overall is somewhat mediocre, and his best use case will certainly be with Sino. So what will you be spending your primos on? A Boo Boo Pharmacy medical bill, or would you perhaps prefer to discharge? Well, let's find out in this video. Also, stay tuned till the end to have your viewer questions about Baiju answered. I'm Juice, and that was the bitter herb spice. Now let's get nerdy. Baiju's healing capabilities are simply beyond mortality, providing an absurd amount of quality healing to all members of your party, being able to heal about 10k to your team twice per rotation when his HP reaches 50k. His healing scales purely off of HP, meaning that achieving his max HP is very simple. He can easily build HP% percent, HP% percent, HP% percent with a free-to-play craftable prototype Amber, which also simultaneously continuously covers his energy costs. Plus, his passive, Purple Nourishment, allows you to restore party HP based on 2.5% of Baiju's max HP when picking up certain harvestable items. A nice little bonus for when you're on the go. Plus, his elemental burst will create a shield with 250% dendro damage absorption, both lasting and regenerating every 2.5 seconds while under his burst effect. Characters affected by the shield get healed over time, and every time the shield regenerates or expires, a small amount of dendro damage is dealt. So this means Baiju is rather unique as a healer, since not only does he just heal, but he can also provide mild interruption resistance for the small shield he generates. This will be considered especially interesting when paired with characters like Sino, who suffer greatly from interruption resistance issues. This also allows him to potentially abuse the Ocean Hoot Clam set, the first and last pop to the bubble being able to proc at max damage, and if you're using prototype Amber, the second bubble will also tick with a considerable amount of damage. His healing overall is a great asset to most Dendro teams, as many teams tend to cause self-damaging effects, such as cores generated from Bloomer Bird it seems as if Baiju's research into overcoming death have certainly proven to be as fruitful as his voice. Seeing as his healing is sure to keep your teammates alive to send your foes into the afterlife. Dendro reactions. Don't we all just love how vegetables are able to explode our enemies into oblivion? Well, Baiju has just the right vegetative seasoning for your Dendro cores, and if we take a look at the contents, it is a 4 passive. Every party member who is healed by Baiju's shield from his elemental burst will have their burning bloom, hyper bloom, and virgin reaction damage increased by 2% and their aggravate and spread damage increased by 0.8% for every 1000 HP Baiju has that does not exceed 50k HP. This essentially means that you could be looking at a 40% bonus to the majority of your Dendro core related reaction. And this is also what truly separates Baiju from Yao Yao as a unit, aside from his ability to provide some shielding. If we take a look at this spreadsheet, we can see roughly how much Baiju provides to a team in terms of his buffing capabilities. Baiju seems especially potent in Hyperbloom situations, especially alongside Sino, as if Sino he will be able to trigger Dendro Resonance, assuming Nahida is in the party by switching Zhongli out for Baiju. He also provides Sino with a solid amount of interruption resistance, healing, and is able to buff the damage produced from his cores decently. With other teams such as Nilu Bloom, for example, characters such as Kokomi are no longer a must as Baiju is able to cover the team's healing, meaning that those of you without a Kokomi won't be forced to stick with Barbara anymore. This also enables the use of units like Yulan and Xingqiu as well. Plus, although his scaling of spread and aggravate is lower, he clearly buffs out Hytham's overall damage nicely within the comp. Baiju's buffing capabilities can be somewhat compared to the likes of Kazuha in the way that his elemental mastery converts into elemental damage bonus within his kit. However, I think it'd be a bit of a stretch to call Baiju a Dendro Kazuha or Dendro Kokomi yet by any means. We'll just have to wait and see whether Baiju will grow on the meta or not. Thanks to Baiju's reliability as a Dendro unit, he's flexible enough to offer his buffing to just about any Dendro team archetype, and unlike Nilu, his passive still works regardless of how many different element characters you have within your party. This also means that Baiju will most likely age very well, since characters of passive similar to V, such as Kazuha, tend to last very long in terms of relevancy lifespan, and are generally able to support the majority of new units that come out post their own release. It is worth noting that in some teams, such as Raiden, Shinkcho, Nahida, and Baiju, he does change the team's playstyle a bit, as Raiden is now on field, and Baiju she replaces Yolan. Her large personal damage is lost, so the team loses out and said high personal DPS. So, even if the core damage is greatly improved, there is a chance he may not always be a DPS increase. Though the fact that this is built into his kit is a very nice bonus and helps Baiju stick out distinctly against other healers. Baiju's medicines are definitely not free to play friendly, though building him certainly is. Baiju's kit likes to be built on pure triple HP percent, or perhaps ER percent, and then double HP percent to cover his energy costs of 180 to 220%, depending on team comp and favonia weapon count, meaning that his 
artifact stats are rather simple and easy to obtain. He can even use a multitude of cheap sets such as 4P's Ocean and Clam, as this kit provides so much healing it would be a great way to contribute some extra damage from his end. Other sets such as 4P's Deep Wood can also be used, though sets like that are usually preferred on other units within his viable team such as Nikita. Plus, he can even use the dirt cheap 4P's instructors to provide your Dendro team with even more EM, which brings a lot of value to the table. 2P's Tenacity and 2P's Vorukasha's Glow can work as a placeholder if you have nothing else but your Baiju. His signature weapon is more of a scam than his human immortality pyramid scheme, to say the least. His actual best is love being a free-to-play craftable weapon, the prototype Amber. Not only does this weapon have a brilliant HP percent substat and greatly synergize with the healing aspect of his kit, but it also greatly covers his energy cost which aid the regular utilization of his elemental birth. Furthermore, Baiju is also a Dendro unit, meaning he's naturally able to flexibly aid free-to-play teams as Dendro is an element easily utilized by free-to-play players due to how Dendro generally functions at character level and elemental mastery stats. However, it is important to note that Baiju himself is mostly a unit that would be considered as a luxury pickup. He is certainly free-to-play friendly to build, though the actual role he plays in teams, while comfortable, may not be as influential to a free-to-play player as perhaps Nihita would be. Though, the same can't be said for your Mora, however. Baiju is indeed a very comfortable and flexible unit to own, though his actual usefulness is highly debatable. Let's think about it. Within a Sino team, Zhongli's role is to provide consistent interruption resistance. Baiju may be able to also add his A4 buffing, healing capabilities, and frequent regeneration of his weak shields, though Zhongli is able to play in more teams than only Dendro ones. Nilu can easily survive without a Baiju, Kokomi would do just fine as the Bloom team's healer, Al Haitham and Kachin can fend for themselves without eating a buff with their spread and aggravate damage, and within most Kachin teams, Baiju is simply a side grade to Yao Yao, and that is another thing to consider. Baiju's buffing is nice, yes, but is it really enough buffing to warrant pulling the hefty cost of a 5-star character since his primary role is of that as a Dendro healer? And Yao Yao has been proven to be rather sufficient when it comes to this role. When it comes to the Dendro application between the two, Yao Yao and Baiju are actually on quite similar levels. Baiju applies one unit of Dendro for every bit of Dendro damage dealt with the skiller burst, and his bursts have no ICD, with 1.5 meters of Dendro application every 2 seconds. While his Dendro application isn't dirt 4, it certainly isn't enough to warrant him being a deep wood holder or acting as a solo Dendro. His shield does regenerate often, though it is a rather weak shield and isn't an incredibly strong case to make against Yao Yao. His healing is nothing to scoff at for sure, but it really boils down to the question of whether you really need that much healing or not, or if the buffs toward your Dendro cores are significant enough for you to consider pulling for him. It's also worth noting that the majority of Dendro teams that require a healer in specific already have them sorted out, as Dendro has been out by 3.0 by this point, and people have already had an adequate amount of time to test and play with Dendro reactions and find out their most optimal setup. Toma for Burjin, Kokomi for Blue and Prototype Nikita or Yao Yao for Kaching, just to name a few. Even for characters like Kaching, who typically have no dedicated healer from her main aggravate team, Baiju is considered simply a side grade to Yao Yao. I feel that Baiju could be somewhat classed as a jack of all trades, yet a master of none, as he heals, buffs, and can produce shields which reduce interruption, applies mild Dendro, and can play in just about any solid Dendro team comp. However, he overheals, his buff isn't highly significant, and his presence and teams can easily be replaced, and his shield is essentially paper, though it does provide solid comfort when it comes to interruption resistance. Baiju is a support, and having low damage in of itself isn't a poor quality, as many characters do and still provide excellent utility. However, Baiju's dendro damage is generally on the lower ends, considering how he's typically built. Triple HP% percent or ER% percent and double HP% percent is generally how you want to build Baiju, and with the way his talents scale, Baiju's skit is most likely purely healing oriented. You won't be yielding much damage from his talent. It is possible to fix his damage contribution up a little bit by providing with a 4-piece Ocean Hood Clam set, which can add about 80k damage to your rotations through Clam's full duration, assuming you haven't built with 50k HP. This isn't that bad, although this requires Ocean Hood Clam in order to be effective, and if you're running any other artifact set, Baiju essentially provides no meaningful contributions to the party whatsoever in terms of damage. He may make up for this in the terms of his buffing A4 passive that he provides, though I would be hard pressed to say that this completely excuses his lack of damage when it comes to the actual dendro cores being produced within the team he plays in. Baiju does not own any of the cores. Now in this context, we can actually register this as a net positive, as it means that his double or triple HP percent build won't be drawing away the dendro core power produced by the other members of the team, and he won't be drawing down the overall team DPS. However, it does also mean he does not provide any damage for dendro cores either, as his kit is essentially 100% focused around support. 
He does, on a technical level, deal damage, as every time the shield is produced by his burst and it regenerates itself or gets shattered or expires, it will produce some dendro damage and select dendro application, though nothing shockingly groundbreaking. How negative this is can depend, varying from player to player, as although Baiju technically does function very nicely within his given role, it can also be contended that many of our supports, such as Nikita and Kazuha, are highly capable of producing solid team contributions, even though they're generally considered support units, though one could argue. Wouldn't characters like those be considered the exception? Well then, let's say something to bounce back would be, why aren't they the standard? Five star supports in recent times have all had some kind of decent damage contribution. For example, Yolan is another character who can deal great damage as an air quotes support. However, this doesn't change that Baiju is indeed very cushy to play, and something as trivial as perhaps not having the highest numbers on the block won't stop his medicines from packing a punch. It's fantastic how free to play friendly Baiju is. He's generally a flexible unit within the Dendro archetype who can slot into pretty much all of the viable teams within Dendro, and will most likely find other uses upon his actual releases of the game as well. But when it comes into highly investing in Baiju, unfortunately there's not much returns. The thing is, Baiju is a healer at its core, that much has been established already, and since his personal damage isn't really the main attraction of his kit, you would think that his signature weapon would perhaps synergize more nicely with supporting his team, perhaps even helping all that HP built on and be useful in other ways as well. Well, how does a 12 percent elemental damage bonus sounds on a character with little to no use for it. Essentially, for every 1000 HP that Baiju possesses, he gains a 0.3% stack of elemental damage bonus which caps out at 12%, plus he regains 4 energy every 2.5 seconds while under the weapon's effect. While the energy recharge factor of Baiju is quite nice, this is nothing new as Prototype Amber can also achieve this as well, especially at R5 and Prototype Amber arguably becomes Baiju's best in slot. Baiju's 5 star weapon is overall very low value in general, which doesn't only hurt Baiju, but also other characters as well. There seems to be no other Catalyst user other than Kokomi who could arguably utilize his weapon's HP% percent substat. However, Kokomi does not create shields for herself, therefore she wouldn't be able to reap the full value out of the weapon's passive. Plus, Kokomi generally prefers the higher value R5 prototype Amber or R5 Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers anyways. Tank Fei could arguably make a very niche use out of its weapon, as G2 is built on pure HP% percent with some ER% percent to activate her shield. She could actually utilize the HP% percent substat, and it would overall be a usable weapon option on her. But are you really going to go through the scam of the weapon banner for a use as niche as that? Also, its constellations aren't really that valuable. A good thing about Baiju's constellations is that they don't lock any key gameplay features that make this kit feel more or less complete behind any constellation barriers. While this is generally good design, what Hoyover failed to do was make his later constellations actually worthwhile. While his C1 and C2 do help in lowering his energy cost by quite a bit, and his C4 isn't that bad as it's actually a solid form of team support, especially within the Dendro archetype, they aren't really that worth going for. Typically, when a character's poor constellation value, they at least have to have one or two constellations that can act as a saving grace. But when it comes to Baiju, all silence, except perhaps the hissing of Changsheng. This is mostly a negative as a 5 star, it means there's no real clear upgrade path when it comes to Baiju. His signature weapon is essentially a best of slot on nobody, unless we're counting the potential use on Tank Fei. his early constellations don't do much for the team, and his later ones are just far too expensive and low quality in terms of their buff to justify the price of them, and he has no team where he is genuinely irreplaceable as a premium best in slot unit. For example, if you take a look at Baiju C4, he provides 80 elemental mastery to the rest of his teammates for 15 seconds after using his burst. This may seem good on paper considering he's supporting exclusively Dendro teams, though consider that this is a C4 constellation with a minimal buff to the team and with constellations that aren't very noteworthy beforehand. Now if we take a look at C2 Kazuya, he provides 200 elemental mastery to everyone that stands within his elemental burst radius, which is rather wide. Now granted that Kazuya's burst does only last for 10 seconds as opposed to the 15 second effect that Baiju C4 provides, consider how C2 Kazuya is half of the constellations it takes for Baiju to even mildly replicate the elemental mastery buff that Kazuya provides to his teammates and himself by the way, and not only that, but it isn't even half of what Kazuha provides at C2. It mostly means that low spenders, dolphins and whales and all other mammals of the hydro territories might want to lay low this time. Since in my opinion, I don't think that Baiju's support genuinely worth wailing on when I say his kid is complete at C0. This needs to stop now! I mean that his kit is complete at C0, but for those of you who may watch this and accidentally pull a C1 Baiju by any chance, do not fret since it isn't totally useless as it lowers Baiju's energy recharge costs as aforementioned earlier and also increases the amount of times you can heal your party per rotation. Just wanted to inform for all those lucky travelers in advance. 
unfortunately, as of release, Baiji won't have any gear but specifically dedicated to him as a unit. Now, units usually tend to get artifact sets that work with them in later patches, so I doubt this will remain an issue for long. And his choices currently aren't completely bad either, though unfortunately there isn't really any optimal pick at the moment, as there's certain flaws to each of the sets you could consider putting Baiji on. Ocean Hued Clam is arguably his best choice, and since he does indeed overheal quite an absurd amount, I would say this is probably the best choice for Baiji as a whole, since it adds a little extra DPS to his team. Though I wouldn't label this as anything special, since other healers could also use Ocean Hued Clam to decent effect as well, and since Baiji can proc the sense effect at maximum every time, he may be able to maximize the first and last procs and deal a solid amount of damage on the second proc, but he won't be dealing consistent Clam DPS throughout Clam's duration. Baiju seldom ever wants to hold Deep Wood due to the nature of his weaker and overall lower Dendro application, and since he's generally paired with Nihita, he usually takes another set. He can take four instructors, this is still a four star set with four star stats, meaning you lose out on quite a bit of artifact substat rolls overall on your Baiju. There is no need to put him on a two piece, two piece HP percent set, since he's so easy to build HP percent on that trying to gain some extra from set bonus effect is rather obsolete. So while Ocean Yude Clam and in some less favorable situations, Deep Wood seem like okay choices on Baiju, the problem still stands that Baiju doesn't have any dedicated set, nor does he have any option to synergize perfectly with his kit yet. We'll just have to wait and see what the foreseeable future holds when it comes to future dedicated sets for Baiju. Perhaps by then, Baiju will have overcome mortality. Now, a few days ago, I want to hear your personal questions on Baiju. Let's address them here. If you're searching for a premium 5-star dungeon unit and do not already own Nihita, then no. Nihita is the most high value unit in the game to pull for as of now, and Baiju is a luxury pick in comparison. Well, Nihita and Baiju together serve as Dino's most optimal pair. However, if you do not have any of these three units, then choose Nihita. Nihita will up his performance the most and unlock Hyper Bloom as a team archetype for him. If you already own Nihita and Zhongli, Baiju does provide some excellent utility to Sino, though it may just be a wasted 5-star pull overall as Zhongli serves his role as an interruption resistor just fine. His shield is in fact mayonnaise! It's literally weaker than the crystallized shield, though remember, it refreshes itself often enough that it's still useful in preventing interruption. Though remember, his shield is not an instrument. Baiju's personal damage is so dirt low, so I don't recommend playing him this way. But if you insist, Elemental Mastery, Dendro Damage Bonus, and crit stats on him with a 4-piece deep wood set would work fine. Baiju procs Dendro Resonance for Sino and Nihita teams, prevents interruption resistance, heals him up easily if he gets hit, boosts his aggravator hyper bloom damage decently with his buffing passive, and is slightly better than John Lee for him. He's also one of the few characters who bust up times match up to Sino's burst up time. Arguably his best set, he overheals a great deal, and he can't be played as a solo Dendro as he doesn't apply enough Dendro. This is a good choice on him considering that he has no dedicated artifact set. His constellations are pretty mediocre and his kit is pretty complete at C0, so I'd say he's fine at C0, though Baiju himself is a luxury choice in general. Unfortunately not, Burning only has a niche within Ganyu milk teams, and those require Nihita to function as Baiju doesn't apply enough Dendro for those teams to function with him as the only Dendro applying unit. Virgin will be better by a slight amount, however. Yes, it's fine to build him on triple HP percent, as he doesn't proc any of his own bloom with his weak Dendro application, and he covers for healing so that other units can be more damage oriented in their build. He'll provide interruption resistance and proc Dendro resonance too, but he cannot play as a solo Dendro, so do keep that in mind. His application isn't enough to remain consistent. Thank you for your questions, everyone. Now let's move on to our verdict. He can be an improvement within teams where Yao Yao isn't very strong. For example, Sino team. However, if you already have a Zhongli and do not have any other incentive to pull Baiju to slot into your various other Dendro teams, then what's the point of pulling for him? He would be a very niche case on your account then, and would quite frankly be a waste of a 5-star to pull. I will contend that Baiju is a unit that should honestly only be pulled once your Dendro teams are complete and you can afford the extra investment. I think personally, Baiju is definitely going to age well, just Kokomi and Kazuha for example, but I don't think he's ever going to be a must-pull by any means or ever hyped up as such. Overall, Baiju may have some impressive skills and may have solid contribution to the Dendro archetype, but I feel like it's a stretch to say Baiju is a must-pull or should be pulled as a priority Dendro unit. He's essentially the epitome of his medicinal prices, a luxury. Either way, it seems that somehow Baiju has not been graced by the effects of Leo and Bias, as although he is indeed a decent luxury pickup from the looks of things, he is certainly very skippable as well. Or just pull for Changsheng, that's cool too. Overall, if you're looking for another 5-star Dendro Catalyst to add to your collection that perfectly fulfills the role of a healer with deep interruption resistance and Dendro reaction buffing built into his kit, Baiju is certainly a solid choice. Well, this has been Juice, signing out, and I wish y'all a great and prosperous healthy life so that you won't have to stop by the Boo Boo Pharmacy and break your wallet. Have a pleasant day, and see you around!